Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Special Advisor to the Mayor, City of Rio de Janeiro, Rodrigo Rosa. Well, good evening. I think it, are we evening already? Uh, we're here for the, the planning session briefing, uh, uh, smart planning and infrastructure, the building intelligence, livable cities and neighborhoods. Uh, this is interesting topic, and I'd like to call on stage. Uh, it's an honor to me to uh, Mr. First, Mr. Uh, Gustavo Fruit, Mayor of Curitiba, a former congressman that I was able to work with in Congress. Please congratulate me. I would like to call also Mr. Chael Hayes from the city of Portland. He has done some terrific initiatives on green development. El Sindicato de Milano, the mayor of Giuliano Pizapia. Did I get it right? I don't know. And uh, at the, for the end, Mr. Miguel Angel Mancera, El Alcalde de Mexico City, the mayor of Mexico City. <laughs> My Spanish is a little better than you tell. Well, intelligent and livable city. This is an interesting topic. Um, and... Uh, I would like to, to talk a little on uh, Mayor Pais on his speech yesterday, spoke about um, how a smart city can be a sustainable city. I think uh, we all can use technology to do better. Technology is a, a powerful, important tool. We have uh, seen some cities in the world using, being very innovative on uh, using technology. Rio, for example, has a center of operations. It's a big uh, situation room that gathers information from all departments in the city. And we have uh, uh, this geek unit there that uh, really analyzes big data and tries to, to understand patterns and uh, to help managers of the city be more efficient. Uh, we have, for example, this uh, interesting initiative with uh, uh, Twitter that uh, we actually... Uh, search on, on Twitter messages about dengue fever. You know, dengue fever is an is a important issue in the summertime in Rio. And uh, by the, in the Twitter message, we, we, by, by in, identifying some of the, the focus on the Twitter messages on, on, on dengue, we can identify where the focus of the, the epidemic is. So but this is just an idea of many, many innovations that uh, cities have done. I'd like to, to call first uh, Mayor Mancera to, to speak about uh, what, how Mexico has using technology to do a, a livable city. Thank you, everybody. First of all, I want to thank the invitation to this uh, forum and to congratulate all the mayors present here. In this specific subject, Mexico has great, made major progress because communication on zero basis is a daily reality. We are working with dashboard that allows to monitor in real time the air conditions the citizens with their smartphones have applications that uh, we are making available to the neighborhood, to the cities, if they can, what they can do during the day, how is the atmosphere, if they can do open air activities or not. And this is important because in the decade of the 90s, Mexico was the most polluted city of the world. And we have progressed a lot. And these innovations allow us to put the knowledge 
uh, available to the citizens. Our government has implemented in the city what is the lab laboratory of the city of Mexico. That is an innovation center where we have communication with the laboratories of London in South America, different parts of the world. We just have participated in an event that there was an, a jartón in the city of Mexico uh, submitted by youngsters that are interested in connecting the citizen with the different ser services and opportunities that offers the city. We had many applications for the city. Three, one with public transport, second with health issues, and second with government management. I think that the progress in these action lines is very uh, primordial and fundamental. We have been talking to the mayors uh, that are related to the activities of the cities, and we progress. We Today we know the level of water that is going through the city in order to avoid floodings. Mexico City has turned into an analysis center for this uh, issue because we have uh, uh, land movements and uh, um, we have a uh, heartbreaks and the, uh, the pollution at the same time uh, complicates things. And also the conditions, more than 13,000 kilometers of uh, drinking water and other certain mill uh, water networks. We achieve this through the technology and this then innovation is a uh, primordial a fundamental. understand factor. better how, how the city works. And I, I would like to ask uh, Mayor Giuliano Pisapia. Uh, I know Milan it's, uh, has a very strong uh, food policy and how innovation relates to that. Uh, In Milan, we have a policy that uh, looks very closely at mobilizing food to manage uh, traffic as well, to increase uh, the traffic of bicycles that are made available to our citizens. We've tried to increase pedestrian walkways as well. But what I want to highlight today, and I want to launch and make all the, all the mayors that are present here today aware of this fact, that Milan in 2015 will be holding the Expo. This is a universal exposition 2015 that will be held from the 1st of May and will have as its basic theme, Feeding the Planet. And this is... Uh, fight against the food waste to try and overcome a situation which today is especially dif difficult where there are people today that have too much to eat and that are suffering from obesity and that on the other hand we have people that are suffering from malnutrition. So as the mayor of the country, of the city, sorry, that will be hosting the ESPO, we we have 130 odd countries that will be participating in the Expo. And together with this, we will have the United Nations, the European Union, the Food and Agricultural Organization, and NGOs will also be participating. This is a challenge and an invitation that I'm making and giving to you all that this becomes a common goal and a common uh, effort by all the countries and all the cities through our organization that we can work as mayors to reach uh, and reach an agreement and an undertaking on the, if we can, a protocol on food and what we can do as cities to create a food policy because this would be a, a winning, a winning, uh, a winning thing that we could do. And as cities, we have great, um, a great ability to do something. There's 
Amsterdam, for example, in other continents, in Asia and in America, in South America, as well as African, that have already gone a long way um, to create a food policy. But we have to make sure that nutrition and diets, we have to have a policy that is accompanied and has as objective what the mayors of large cities can do in two, three years. This would be a great step forward for all of us and a great step forward for our planet. Thank you. Mr. Hales, how do you think innovation is related to Portland, Oregon, uh, and uh, how is this making the city better? Well, you know, we're a very technological city. Uh, we have a large high-tech industry in, in the Portland area. We have a large and growing software industry. But actually, I, I want to connect my comments to my two colleagues here because I think what Portland is doing uh, as a young city, uh, compared, to, of course, to either of my colleagues, our city is just an infant. We were founded in 1851. Um, but as a young city, we are actually trying to get back to very old technologies. One is urban containment. Of course, European cities were compact because all transportation was by foot or by horse, and, and so they were compact naturally. And in Oregon and in Portland, we have done that deliberately. Now, we've had 40 years of public policy that says there will be an urban growth boundary around the city, and that limits our growth and protects the farmland where, of course, our food, some of our food comes. Um, secondly, we, we've been uh, very aggressive about building, city, uh, building the city based on old ideas of mixed use and walking. Again, in America particularly, we, we really wandered away from those basic ideas. We have so much of the American landscape that's suburban and difficult to navigate on foot or on bicycles. And so we're getting back to those very basic, very human ideas. And then third, uh, we've really uh, been a pioneer in the United States in the use of electric trams, streetcars, light rail, uh, and we have an extensive and growing system of streetcars and light rail, and that's improving our mode split, how much people use transit for their daily life, but of course has also had a, a powerful effect on our air quality. Uh, when I first moved to Portland uh, 30 years ago, we had 115 days that year where our air quality failed to meet the federal standard. Now we have none, zero, and in part that's because of improved automotive technology, but it's mostly because we have changed how people live so that they walk more, ride their bicycles more, take transit, and that their trip length is shorter because of the pattern of development that we're building. So yes, we love technology and it serves us well, but really Portland's story is about getting back to very historic, uh, durable, original ideas about how cities should be organized and using old technology like electric trains and bicycles instead of the more recent technology of the automobile. How about Curitiba, Mayor Foot? Bom dia, Rodrigo. Bom dia, prefeitos. E uma saudação especial ao presidente do C40, Eduardo Paes, prefeito do Rio de Janeiro. Uma das principais... The mayor of Rio de Janeiro. I can't do anything. I can't hear it. No. Uh, what uh, what uh, makes Curitiba uh, an important city? The inhabitant has uh, a great pride uh, in its uh, city and has a feeling of belonging. And uh, democracy demands a lot of patience, requires a lot of patience, dialogue, and decisiveness. The inhabitant of the city is quite committed in maintaining the city clean, his own house clean, and to be so, uh, uh, soli uh, for solidarity. And one of the things that I would like to highlight, highlight is that this year, Curitiba is going to uh, review his, uh, its strategic plan. Uh, we call it a, a, a sustainable strategic plan. And we have uh, environmental objectives and goals 
that are incorporated uh, into the development of the city. And we have a great social concern. We try to educate people, we, we educate the children. We very strong on innovation and technology. I hope I have the opportunity to speak a little bit more about our transport system. Uh, in Curitiba, the transport was uh, introduced not to answer demand, but as a way of promoting growth. We have the, the our transport system serves the population, but we also want to, our transport to transport system to uh, contribute to the economic growth of the city, of the city. Our challenge now is to implement uh, new systems and to try and uh, decentralize the, the city. And we are investing in uh, uh, collective transport for the different suburbs of the city. Um, um, we also talk about collaboration with people. Uh, technology has allowed us to reach directly, sometimes individually. You know, every mayor today uh, has a Twitter and, uh, and it talks to any person that connects him. How do you use that to promote better living in your city? Well, we have a very strong tradition in Portland of citizen engagement. Uh, we have a very aggressive uh, uh, set of neighborhood associations around the city, almost 100 of them and uh, the traditional neighborhood associations are still strong, but now we communicate with more people in more ways because of Twitter and Facebook and, and our websites. Uh, and of course, Portland has become much more diverse culturally and racially in the last few years. So we now need to communicate in other languages and in other cultures. So that's a, a challenge. Uh, and we are, of course, using uh, all of those tools to try to carry on that conversation. Uh, I think, again, I think for cities like uh, Curitiba and Portland that have been embarking on a change agenda for some time, it's, you, you occasionally wonder if, if, uh, if it's getting through to your citizens. And actually, we have some recent evidence because we're doing more and more public opinion polling. And we actually just conducted a public opinion poll in our state, and Portland was included in this sample and then broken out that shows that uh, actually it's very heartening, I think, for all of us in the C40 movement, that even in the conservative parts of our state, 70% of the respondents to this poll said, climate change is real and I need to change my life in order to respond to this. 70% said uh, we should spend more on transit and less on roadways. 70% uh, also said uh, we should uh, I, I will take a better quality of life and a better environment over a faster economic growth. And so using public opinion polling as well as all these ways we connect with individual citizens are two ways that we can check to make sure that we as leaders are still in touch with our, our communities even if we're trying to pull them along. How about uh, the people in Mexico and how they engage with uh the, the federal, the municipal government. Bueno, la verdad es que también en México. Sí, es que en México too, the relationship uh, in social networks is very intense. We have uh, different uh, lines of communication. Uh, I personally handle my Twitter. Uh, I am informed of all happenings uh, uh, in the in the C40. Today, I have about uh, 700,000 followers, and this uh, represents a great responsibility in terms of what I uh, comment about. Also, the official, official accounts in the government are in permanent communication with the citizens, and we are uh, uh, informing about everything that happens in the city of Mexico, and we are about uh, 20 million people. I agree that our obligation, our responsibility, well, our people are not concerned about who generated the problem, uh, the federal government or the municipality. Uh, people want to know who is going to solve the problem. And we, as uh, people responsible for the government of the city, have to respond to the request, to the problem, and obviously propose a solution. 
Finally, if the solution is the federal government or the municipality, that, that comes in second place. We have to generate an environment that makes uh, living together possible and that uh, makes people enjoy the city more. What has worked in the city of Mexico? Well, what has worked is uh, being able to improve the transport system. Uh, we have succeeded in creating better spaces uh, for the living together. Uh, we have uh, a target uh, uh, to recover public space that is very well designed. The citizens will participate to find public spaces that become uh, parks in neighborhoods, uh, mini parks, etc. This is a strategy we have started this year, and this will enable us to use uh, spaces that were normally occupied by vehicles. Now you will find people and children. This is a little generating conditions for the well-being of people that are accompanied by uh, social programs in the city of Mexico, where practically 60% of the budget uh, is dedicated to these things. Contrary to what happens in other cities where the federal government takes on these tasks, in the city of Mexico we have to do it ourselves. So the task uh, becomes uh, uh, twofold. On the one hand, issues of security, infrastructure, and on the other hand, issues of security, of, uh, sorry, of uh, social services. Uh, how important is this communication? Well, I think the communication ought to be permanent. These spaces are where we learn about the good practices of uh, mayors in the world, and this makes it possible for us to propose strategies. I agree what what has been mentioned here. We have to... Uh, use indicators, we have to evaluate ourselves uh, continuously and set up uh, uh, common targets because many issues uh, belong to all of us. They are common. And if we have common uh, targets in the C40, I am sure that with Maya Payor this will be the case, we will be able to attain uh, or, or to harmonize our actions and our indicators. And the cities, cities are changing the world today. Uh, so cities ought to get, to get more involved in this reality, not just in the social networks, but also from the point of view of facts. In, in technology. And I would ask Mayor Fruit uh, if he thinks that collaborating with people, it, it will make better governments and how you're doing it in Curitiba. The greatest challenge for a mayor is to motivate the population to take part. You need to be ready to hear what they have to say and to answer. Democracy is a recent phenomenon in Brazil, and we have to uh, encourage participation. Besides traditional methods, we are implementing new methods. In the first place, we have public audiences, public meetings with the population in different areas of the city so that we discuss the budget with them. A second point, we do constant consultations uh, at, on a public level for large projects. At the moment, we are discussing a project about uh, the subway. Third point, we need transparency in, inf in our information. All the data has to be public, all the information, since last year, including the salary of everybody that works for the municipality. And all the indicators, all the environmental indicators are publicly available. And this makes, uh, makes it, uh, requires transparency. We also uh, want a system uh, uh, to strengthen the communication and the social networks, we have, uh, um, we are able to communicate with more than half the population of Curitiba through the social network, social media. Uh, the way this is established is important and this allows us to monitor the social networks and to identify the requirements of the population. Besides these uh, tools, we have a telephone number, one, number 156. We have more than 130,000 calls a month, and people call this number to say what their requirements are. And we use all this information to create a database where we have uh, 
uh, all the information, we have a room with the uh, geographical referencing of the requirements. In one year, we have increased the participation of the population by 200 percent, and this, of course, creates pressure on us to really meet the requirements of the population. But the greatest demand has to do with the environment. The Curitiba population is extremely firm uh, and uh, on cleanliness. They want the streets to be clean, the parks to be clean, all the public areas to be clean. And uh, this is a permanent process. We're constantly learning, and there isn't a single formula to answer the requirements. In, in the last place, this year, we're going to open the uh, 10th uh, administration area in the poorest uh, suburb of the city, which has, is the one that has uh, a growth, uh, grown, uh, 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 that has grown the most. In, reivindicated in the social network and with the mayor himself with, by the regular channels of communication. Uh, I would ask you how it is in Milan. In Italy, we say that the whole world is one country in the sense that every mayor and every municipality has more or less the same problems, even though when I hear my colleagues speak here, uh, they are very, very far away geographically, but I see they are facing the same problems and the same difficulties but the same will and the same commitment to do something for their citizens. The, the important signals that we have in Milan regarding change is the transparency that my colleague already spoke about. This is essential. Everything must be public. Everything must be on the website. And it must be known through all the, the means that we have available. Also, the use of other tools which have the prerequisite of being serious though because one of the main things that I know about in Milan, living in Milan the citizens of the city want to be heard obviously and they want to be informed and they want to express their, their opinion on every choice but this also results in investments. We need to have an, it, a a local newspaper that can communicate with everybody. This becomes difficult because at the same time, the council has to be very, very serious and very involved. So everything that is used to, be, to inform people is then wasted if it doesn't inform the... It's what we're saying is that it's, it, if you don't use it to clean your own backyard, then it's not working. We have to take into account of the different m methods of communication. There are very, uh, there's a lot of older people in Milan, also students, and a lot of old people. These old people very, don't really have access to the Internet, and they don't have Facebook pages or Twitter, so it's not enough to use these, to use these methods. They, use, they usually live in the outlying areas of the city as well, and there we have the the old age homes, or it's the homes that they built many years ago before Milan uh, developed. We we have a very direct way of communication with them. We have meetings in their areas to communicate with them. They always want the mayor to obviously attend, but I'm sure you can understand this is not always uh, possible. We try through the council members to always have somebody there, and we discuss the various, the various critical aspects during these, men, these meetings. The, for the younger people, obviously, internet is the best tool. We have a website um, for the municipality, which is very, um, very updated. And I also have a personal site if anybody wants to speak to me di directly. I also match the number of friends that my other colleague has. On the other hand, I don't know if this is the case with other, have we, 
we have less and less newspapers being published in our city. I'm sure this is the case in other cities as well. But what we can do to communicate with everything, it's important to use the tools that can also be used as information measures. We had four referendums that were held over recent years, and we had a good percentage of the citizens in the country that part in the city that participated, and this showed these addressed various issues. But the referendums can't be done on all the questions that a mayor has to deal with. I've seen that we best way to do it is to go around and to 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 face things head on and deal with them directly. And sometimes this doesn't make everybody happy, but if we make the right choices, it, the, the, if we make the wrong choices, obviously the mayor himself will know this. I'd just like to mention a significant uh, piece of information. We've done differentiated waste collection, and this is one of the main, um, main objectives of our more broad objectives. And this is very positive for this city. Recently, I did a research, and we have what uh, struck me very much is that 80% of the citizens in our, in our city were in favor of this. But the most delicate thing was, which I wanted a reply to, the the dis inconvenience that is caused by differentiated waste collection because everybody, uh, it's a bit of a bind for everybody to have to go and do this. It's, this is also becomes a nuisance. The response of the, the ch citizens, 83% said that it is, it's a very useful thing and it should be done even though if it's an inconvenience we should try and speak directly to our citizens to understand whether we should pursue a, a project or whether we should pull back because it's not working. All that that we're talking about here as Polish digitocracy on his speech yesterday. It sounds like a strange word, but it's, uh, it's about how uh, go government talks to people, connects, interacts to people uh, using that technology in the city. And uh, that's also part of this uh, troubled uh, and uh, noisy democracy that we have, that we face, and, uh, and how people can be sometimes uh, uh, aggressive, sometimes uh, very eloquent on their demands. Uh, I'll do ask all of you, and I'll ask to please to be, to be short on your answer because we don't have much time, but uh, do you really think this, uh, this new revolution will help democracy, and I start with Mayor Mancera, please. Yo creo que sí. Yo creo que... I think so. Democracia eh, es parte del cambio que está experimentando el El mundo. Si nosotros estamos eh, con la innovación. If we are with the innovation in all the spaces, we necessarily have to advance. I don't see the city of Mexico breaking the communication with its citizens. If it is not through this mechanism, of course, we would like to have experience from other cities. We are observing with great attention uh, this process because we would like to share this ex uh, Rotterdam's experience regarding bikes. The Hanecho, they use so efficiently, or the taxis in London or each of the mayors have expressed here, I think it's so important this communication and this dialogue with citizens is essential. The exercise that we just did with the youngsters, it, it, over, it was overloaded. 
we thought that we had fi 500 or 600 projects, and, and in two days, the, the, the possibilities to participate uh, were uh, uh, exhausted. So these are the interests of the people, of the citizens, to find ways of communications. It requires our action. So the, the municipal, the local government must, must indicate which are the indicators, what undertakings can take the mayors in order that the cities that are transforming the world and we are staying here to chatting about our experiences. We must uh, make undertakings. Mexico, if doesn't under, makes an undertaking of this meeting, then it's, uh, we are only saying what uh, the, the best that we are doing and, and doesn't transcend anywhere else. With this um, noisy uh, social networks and media. Yes, you know, listening to this discussion, I do want to articulate um, the, a slightly uh, opposite view for a moment, and that is thinking about your experience with the new solid waste system. Um, if, you, if you ask people in advance, do you want to change, the answer is usually no. Um, and I think one of the reasons why cities and mayors are succeeding as agents of change in climate change is because there is a concentration of political authority, at least in that small place. In other words, um, although we need to be democratic, and we are, and although we need to communicate with our citizens, we also need to lead. In fact, uh, I'll honor my colleague from Milan with the, my favorite quote from, Machiave from Niccolo Machiavelli, who said, there's nothing more difficult to plan or dangerous to execute than the creation of a new system, because the innovator has all the opposition of those who are invested in the old order and only lukewarm approval from all who will profit from the new. And so when you try out your new solid waste system, after a while, people say, isn't this great? We love this about Milan. And if you build the first streetcar in the United States, as we did in Portland, at first people say, that's a donkey trolley. No one will ride it. And then later, we need to order more cars because they're too crowded. So I think one of the reasons why cities are successful as change agents for climate change is because at the municipal level, there is enough concentration of political power that you can lead. Compare that to, say, a dysfunctional legislature like the United States Congress, which is infinitely representative and capable of doing almost nothing. Mr. Fruitt, do you have any thoughts on this? É um aprendizado e não se controla este fenômeno. Nós temos que saber trabalhar com ele. We must learn to work with it. I'm going to tell you a story or a fact. After I took uh, my post, a group of university students in Curitiba, they gave us access to the information system that fell apart. Uh, they wanted to arrest the students, part of the other part of the city uh, preferred to call them and to talk to them about the transmission of the information. I opted for the call of the students. This um, inquest was um, a withdrawn. They have, the students have developed a system that the, the, the the municipality had to open all the systems, all the channels, and we have a system that is totally monitored 24 hours a day, and all the other applications are being used at the city. This creates a commercial conflict, the information control, but we decided to open it. Last week, we had a similar situation in our taxi system. We also opened it completely completely to all applications. So we must have the capacity to listen. And this is a challenge. As a uh, mayor, I think it's a challenge. And to understand that the world outside is a lot quicker, a lot more agile uh, than the integration capacity and the perception of the public management. So we have to be in a situation to be able to give this answer in order for that, we have to understand this phenomenon as an ally, even when it is based in anger, even when it's aggressive, 
I believe that my mother doesn't have a Facebook. <laughs> I think that's what we all concluded. Uh, I would uh, finalize with Mayor Pizapia. Uh, your thoughts on this, I'll, I'll ask you too. The democratic relationship with citizens is fundamental. The mayor is elected by all its citizens, and it's a very strong signal of democracy. But democracy also means engaging with citizens and involving citizens. But as we said at the beginning, sometimes we have um, opposing parties. But by exchanging ideas, we can change things, and the mayor has the responsibility and the right to make the, uh, the choices and make the selections, and he has the right also to back off if the things don't work. Like we said, the differentiated weight was one of the examples that I gave you. At the beginning, there was a lot of opposition, and obviously we had the mayor had to make a choice whether to go ahead. We had a referendum, and that was a favorable vote. The, we have to be able to make an evaluation and go back, and I like your Machiavelli quote. I'll take another one that it's very easy to refer and it's very difficult to govern. And I think if we do our job with passion, we will succeed. And with a democracy, every citizen must know that the, any decisions made in good faith are decisions that are good for the citizens. On the social networks afterwards. But thank you very much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, please proceed to lunch on the fifth floor. Breakout sessions will begin at 1.45, and the next plenary session begins at 3.10. Please deposit your headsets at the back of the room as you are leaving the plenary. Thank you.